In Arabic, the name of Muhammad, Muhammad has got many names, but one of the most important name is Mustafa. Mustafa in Arabic means he who was selected. And the idea is that since the time of Adam, the first human being, God selected from every generation the best of all the descendants of Adam. So there was a, some kind of natural selection, one generation after the other. Until at the end, he selected the best of the best of the best of the best. And this is the Prophet Muhammad. And he chose him to give him his word, the exact word of God, and of course selected him to be the prophet that will bring to humanity the finest of all revelations. This is Islam. That we are talking about a culture which is highly rich, highly interesting, and highly rewarding. And that's what the most important thing. It's highly rewarding because it basically for the ordinary person it's a very, very simple religion. I'm not talking about philosophers, I'm not talking about um, academicians, I'm not talking about, uh, about the great theologians, I'm talking about the simple person for whom Islam is the most rewarding of all religions. The end of the story, if he is a good Muslim, and he dies, he is going to go straight into paradise, and paradise is described in the most colorful way possible in the Quran. And um, this, uh, for this reason, I think we should speak about Islam with um, great respect. And not just, you know, as I can hear some people say, well, it's Islam, it's nothing. No, it's not. And it's not a simple thing that a person like me and others like, like uh, me in the academy, um, uh, in fact, uh, dedicated their life for the studying of this culture. Now, Islam is not a religion in the ordinary, simple way of thinking. Islam is a culture which comprises everything. And most of all, it is a culture based on revelation and it is a culture which is based on a legal system. It is basically a legal system. It is a legal system which comprises everything. It comprises the life of the individual, it comprises the life of the society, it comprises the state. That's one thing. Secondly, it is a world religion. It's not like Judaism, which is not a world religion. It is connected with the chosen people, and it's only for them. And it's not connected with the territory of the world. It's connected with one small country. Islam is a world religion connected with the world, and it, is one, it, wants, to, to, it wants to establish world order. For Islam, the whole world is one state. And all the people of the world are those people who live in this one state. Now when um, Muhammad came with this idea, he, the words came from God to him. And it says, I don't know how many, do any people know Arabic here? They don't. So I, I will not quote in Arabic. Um, in Surah 61, verses 11, 13, we hear that God sent Muhammad with the true religion, with the right message, with the right path, in order that it should overcome all the other religions. Which means that there is only one truth. Jews and Christians, which are called the people of the book, had once their own truth, but they were not a very good custodians. And they falsified their books. That's why Allah had to send another prophet, a modern prophet, that should bring the last word of God and the only word of God. 
to humanity. This is the Quran. Nothing can be superior to it. And because of that, this religion is regarded to be one that stands on top of everything else. In Arabic, they say, Al-Islam ya'lu wa la yu'la alayhi. Islam is superior. Nothing can be superior to it. Which means we are talking about not only the final word of God, not only about the finest word of God, but the truest of all revelations. Now what does the, what does the community have to do? The community of the believers. Those people that were lucky enough to have their hearts open and to have accepted the call of the Prophet Muhammad. What do they have to do? They have a mission in this world to bring the word of God to the whole universe or if you want to the whole of this planet. Yes. 